morning, Carmela. Good morning. How are you doing, Sandia? I'm good, and I'm happy to have you here in Thank Ottawa. Thank you for having us. And to uh, talk to you a little bit about new legislation around medical assistance uh, in dying. Uh, with a lot of experience and knowledge in this issue, uh, what is your overall response to the new proposed legislation? As you know, Disabled Women's Network of Canada is very concerned um, that the legislation passed at all. Um, we, of course, have to abide by the Supreme Court decision, right. as every Canadian does. And um, we were disappointed with the decision because we're concerned about the fact that it is the beginning of the slippery slope that um, was in effect even with the do not resuscitate orders. So that women with disabilities and women as caregivers were already being pressured to have a do not resuscitate order or were being pressured as caregivers for having their relatives have do not resuscitate orders. In Bonnie's in my first year um, um, as president and executive director, respectively, uh, with Disabled Women's Network of Canada, women were coming to us with concerns just on the face of do not resuscitate orders. And women were feeling that they, uh, uh, in their role as caregivers, were finding that their loved ones were being pressured to sign do not resuscitate orders. And in some cases, their loved ones um, were being uh, seen as non-viable, why even treat them, um, when they had conditions that even though they might be disabled or they might be uh, perhaps elderly, um, it was like, well, why even treat them? And the conditions were easily treatable. So for example, my friend was summoned to the bedside of her uncle. He's 93 years old, he was living in long-term care, and he needed some rehydration and some antibiotic for his urinary tract infection before he was even examined. The family was approached and she was his guardian and she was asked, well, you know, the car is old and you know, the metal is fatigued. Why would you even want to fix it at all? And she said, well, my uncle is a human being. He's not a piece of metal. And before we make decisions about his treatment, maybe you'd at least like to examine him. So that, you know, if indeed there had been a massive stroke or a big heart attack or some very serious thing where maybe there would be a consideration not to subject him to a lot of intrusive you know, medical procedures, she might consider a do not resuscitate order, but all it was was a simply treated urinary tract infection. And before he was even treated or examined, they were pressuring her not to even treat him. That's completely unfair. And so your feeling is that the new legislation puts people at further risk? Absolutely. Absolutely. How, in what ways do you think women with disabilities are vulnerable in light of this new legislation? Women with disabilities are already at greater risk. And all you have to do is look at Article 6 of the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities to know that Article 6 exists because women with disabilities are already more vulnerable to violence and abuse, more economically disadvantaged, and at greater risk for, for poverty, less access to rights, and that's worldwide. Are you aware of um, who typically asks for assistance in dying? Yes, it has been overarchingly women. And they're not looking at the supports and services they didn't get. They're, nobody is looking at the travesty of justice that their deaths have been because they didn't get supports and services that they needed. And nobody is questioning why they died as a result of the injustice of the supports and services they didn't get. 
Can we talk a little bit about that? What kinds of supports and services do you think um, people need, women in particular, disabled women in particular? Well, certainly they need access to palliative care, they need access to pain relief, they need access to home care. Home care needs to encompass a range of home supports such as cleaning and the home maintenance that would need to be able to underpin the ability to keep one's home successfully. And women do not have access to those services and supports and also things like childcare because none of those things are encompassed in a robust set of home care services. And it is a travesty of justice that those things happen.